this is the glasswing butterfly and as you can see it is quite unique in that it has clear see-through wings. In this video we're going to look at the life cycle of the glasswing as well as how to keep and breed them, the setup, the food plant and any other information. As you can see, glasswings not only like flowers but also feed on fruit as well. Banana is their favourite. The life cycle of the glasswing follows the same as any other butterfly. It starts off with a small white egg which are laid singly on the underside of sestrum leaves. After three to five days, a tiny caterpillar will hatch from the egg. The caterpillar starts by making a hole in the leaf. It makes it very easy to see whether you have caterpillars on your plants because the holes will start to appear. The caterpillar will then eat its way to the edge of the leaf. As the caterpillar gets bigger, it changes colour and in its final instar it becomes mostly white with a green stripe along the sides of it. Looking at the food plant for the caterpillars, these are generally Cestrum nocturnum and Cestrum parkwi. You can also use Cestrum elegans as well as probably quite a few other Cestrum species, but generally Nocturnum is the best one to go for. If you're not going to heat your greenhouse or polyphenol during the winter, you might want to go for Cestrum parkwi, which is a bit more hardy than Nocturnum and others. Once the larvae is fully grown, it will start to look like this and prepare for pupation. So after a day in that state, it turns into a pupae and the pupae is extremely small, it's really a tiny thing and it's amazing to think that the butterfly fits inside of it. One thing to note about glass and pupae is that they do have a habit of dropping off the plants. So it's worth checking around the base of any of your session plants to make sure there's no pupae there. That being said, they are quite good at hatching even if the pupae isn't suspended so it's not too much of a concern. The pupae stage lasts around seven to nine days, usually around a week, and it will hatch out into a butterfly. It's interesting to see that when the butterfly hatches, the wings are actually more translucent than entirely transparent. The passing butterflies are surprisingly long lived and can live anywhere from between eight to 12 weeks. During this time, it will mate, lay eggs, and the cycle will start again. Now that we've looked at the basic life cycle, let's look more at the mating behavior of the glasswing. One of the unusual things about the glasswing butterfly is that it requires alkaloids to be able to breed. The male butterflies collect the alkaloids from sometimes growing or sometimes dried and decomposing plant material plants that it's possible to use are heliotropes, Heliotropum indicum is one of the best ones to use, borage also contains the alkaloids, as well as many plants from the Senecio family. Senecio vulgaris, which is commonly named groundsel, is probably the best one to use. You can see in this picture the adult butterflies taking the alkaloids from the seeds of heliotrope. There are also several other butterflies that do have similar behavior to this, which include Danus chrysippus and Idea leucanoe. The butterfly should then go on to mate. Mating usually occurs in the afternoon until early evening. 
Sometimes they can remain coupled until the following morning. After a day or two, they'll begin to lay eggs. So now let's say you want to try keeping these butterflies yourself. What kind of setup do you need? Well, I'm going to only cover a basic guide here because I plan to do a whole series of videos on the setup of a greenhouse. The best thing to use would be a greenhouse or a polytunnel. This should be no smaller than a six foot cube or a two meter cube. Generally, the bigger the fly terrier you can provide, the better the butterflies will do simply because there's more space and the temperature will fluctuate less. But you have to bear in mind that the target temperature for these butterflies is 21 degrees. They will tolerate a daytime temperature of anywhere between 16 and 28 degrees. For a nighttime temperature, they will tolerate as low as 8 degrees, but it would be much better to aim for around 12 to 15 degrees Celsius. The butterflies are from the rainforest of South America and are therefore going to need high humidity. You should aim for between 60 to 80% humidity, but they have no issue with anything up to 100%. It's also advisable that you make sure there's a lot of shade available for the butterflies. It is also possible to breed these butterflies in a cage indoors, but it's difficult to maintain the right temperature and humidity. One of the things you will need to provide for your butterflies is food and that generally comes in the form of flowers or fruit. Glasslings do like both of these things so providing a mixture is a good idea. In terms of fruit the best options are banana and pineapple but I'm sure they will take others. For flowers if you're going to stick with tropical plants and grow them in your flight area, you want to aim for lantana, pentas, stachytophyta, and anything else that will grow in that environment. You can also substitute this by bringing in cut flowers from outside. Budlia is particularly useful, as well as Centranthus, Fabina banariensis, and things like Honeysuckle. So lastly, you want to get hold of some of these butterflies, where can you get them from? Well, generally, they are available in all of their different stages. You can often buy live adults, pupae and eggs and larvae. In the UK, the best options to check are London Pupae Supplies, Stratford Butterfly Farm, stewardsbutterflies.co.uk, as well as my own website, which is tropicalbutterflies.co.uk. Unfortunately, it's not possible if you're based in the USA for you to get hold of any of these because you would need a permit. The other option you have is if you're able to find someone who's breeding these butterflies, they may be able to spare a few. If you have any further questions about the glasswing, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'm planning on doing many more videos on different species as well as a full setup guide so please it would be greatly appreciated if you could subscribe and i'll see you in another video